This is the tough, which has been redesigned quite a bit. As you can see, they've added more details from every single side on the tough itself. All right, so it's much more uh, decorated, per se, than before. And here you have the Radeon tough. Sticking with the three eight pins, but we're looking here. We have a, actually a Radeon BTF. So this is the first BTF and video card. I'm mean, sorry, not a video card. So that'll be interesting. What is that? That is a, a Radeon 7900XTX BTF. Interesting. Uh, it's a little bit different than the Venetian. You don't have as many people here. It takes an uh, appointment to come in here, but you can see they have the full lineup. Uh, earlier what I showed you guys was a little bit rushed and now we have a little more time. Uh, this is the ROG G700. This is a new chassis as you can guys tell. It has the whole RGB bottom and RGB side. It's really um, kind of like a slightly different choice. They also have one more case that's slightly new. I don't know if I can find it here. Uh, but they have the raw power supply Thor 3 this is going to be around February for release uh, hopefully we have the astral liquid cooling edition here uh, this is a thicker radiator uh, this card uh, which I wasn't able to mention earlier is going to be using a lot of the uh, kind of matrix design for the astrals but it also has the 12 volt high power regulator that did not exist on the Strix versions, but it did exist on the Matrix. Additionally, it has the additional temperature sensors that was on the Matrix, but not on the Strix card. Uh, speaking of Strix, this is the new Strix. Uh, this card actually caps out now at the 5070 Ti. Uh, this part, oh, sorry, uh, this part does light up, and hence why it's plastic. Uh, it kind of calls back to the 30 series a little bit, but because this part lights up, they have to keep it plastic. So all of this is going to be plastic in the front. But if we flip the card around, you're going to see that they're still going to get a metallic uh, well, metal finish on the rear end. Um, right now, there's nowhere for me to plug in for you guys, so I can't really show you. But moving on, we'll move on to the Astral. So this is the Astral. It's going to be a 3.5 slaughter, uh, essentially. Uh, the cooler is actually, from what I've heard, good for up to 800 watts. Um, but comparing the Astral Air to the LC, uh, you're not from the product manager for the GPU. He's told me that anywhere from up to 475 watts, you're not going to see a difference in performance and cooling between this and that, even from a noise perspective. Uh, this under thermal testing is going to hit about 60 degrees uh, at 600 watt uh, load. And here we have the Prime, which is going to be the entry level. This is going to go up to an 80. It will not go past 80. Uh, might be even 70 Ti. Uh, not too sure about that at the moment, but here we're moving, moving on. We have the Tough. The Tough is going to go all the way up to the 90. It has a beefier cooler than the Prime, obviously, and actually a beefier cooler than even the Strix. Uh, this is going to be, I understand, somewhat of an adjustment for a lot of folks that you have the Tough go up to the 90, but the Strix stopping at the 70 Ti. And for those wondering, this is this, these are the fans from the 70 Ti. Uh, current Strix, so there's no change in that. These fans are actually from the 4090s as well, and the 4080s. I don't know if these fans have changed or not from what they are, but this is a four fan design, three in the front, one in the back. Uh, this is obviously gonna be uh, thermally the best performing card. Now in terms of PCB, every single one of these cards has a different PCB. So these two PCBs are not shared, and only these two PCBs the Astral LC and the Air are shared. This is a different PCB than the Prime. The Prime is also a different PCB. So the water block companies are gonna have some fun with that one. Now coming over here, they actually have the 5090 laptops. Uh, they're kind of closing up, but so I can't really show you guys too much of this, um, but you know, they're pretty much ready to go, right? And if we come over here, we have some of the, the new, ROG 7 uh, Wi-Fi routers. Uh, this is the AI model. I'm not too sure of details on that, but moving on, we have the new NUC. Uh, this is the new NUC featuring the new Intel stuff. And I think the 50 series uh, GPUs. And we have a monitor, UCBP. Yes, this is the other new chassis. You can tell that it has a slant. Um, and it has some ROG elements. You see the whole new ROG fans as well. I think these are the Strix fans. And also you have the new AIO cooler, which is still in development. And here we have the 
slightly revisioned um, BTF Z890. I will show you guys the um, other version of this board that was not put out anywhere uh, later in this video. And here we have the recently announced Crosshair X870 Apex. And on the wall, we have a lot of stuff that's already been announced. Uh, here we have the Extreme 360 AIO in white. Uh, for those of you waiting for it in white, pretty much everything from ROG that's going to be popular comes eventually in white, right? So here we have the Swift 4K OLED and then some monitor ghosting testing. And here we have the new ROG Z Z13. Uh, for those of you that aren't aware, this is pretty much a tablet style. Uh, it's actually going to be packing, what is this, the latest Ryzen, I believe. Uh, what is that, a Ryzen APU? And vapor chamber, I haven't really looked too much into this, but I know some folks are into that kind of thing. And we have the new XG Mobile. Uh, this is running a 5090, right? A mobile 5090, and it's using standard Thunderbolt connectors this time. And uh, yeah, so that, other than that, we just have some news efforts. So this is actually the Z890 S Cam 2 board hero. Uh, this was not shown off on the CES floor. Uh, they had kind of hit it since none of the other partners showed their CAM2 boards. Uh, this board is actually a revision. As you can see, the 24 pin has been relocated to the top. I don't know if this will ever board will ever come to light because according to them, the production cost is rather high. So they're kind of testing it with SIs initially since they're not sure if the consumer is willing to install that memory as it's a bit more fragile. At the same time, the target speed out the box is about 9,000. And since Intel is focusing on CKD, it's kind of speeds that they can achieve without having to use CAM2. One more thing. <laughs> For, here are the keyboards, nothing's new here, but we do have the Harp Ace Extreme, which is hard to find pretty much anywhere. And check this out. This, oh, this is an actual user use case, Babe2 calling find that pretty interesting. So technically, uh, you're supposed to be playing a game uh, on your little tablet here, and your Babe 2 will call you and you hear it right over the headset, uh, kind of just streamline connection. And this is a user scenario, but I find that pretty s hilarious that it's Babe 2 scenario, right? Uh, but yeah, so that pretty much wraps up for the ROG stuff. I'm gonna try to get in for more information about the GPUs, and when I do, uh, I'll let you guys know. All right, thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.